Overall, gun crime has fallen significantly in recent years, but worryingly, the very latest figures show a spike in offences. Proportionally, Birmingham now has more gun violence than anywhere else in the UK. We asked Marcia Shakespeare, whose 17-year-old daughter, Letitia, was killed in a drive-by shooting in the city, to investigate. 2003, Birmingham. The police in Birmingham had got used to gun crime, but nothing like this. In the early hours of this morning, they were called to a shooting outside a party at a hairdresser's salon. The whole area had been sprayed with gunfire. They found two teenage girls shot dead and two others wounded. My daughter, Letitia, was one of them. She was just 17 years old. I don't want another incident. It has got to stop now. If you do not come forward after this... Just watching that brings me back to the point of being in that room and thinking about what the hell's happening. Why am I actually saying these things? Now it's been 13 years and I'm back asking the question about guns on the streets of Birmingham. In the last decade, gun crime has fallen significantly in the UK. But worryingly, latest statistics now show a rise. Here in the West Midlands, there are proportionately more incidents than anywhere else in the country. Thank you. Kenny Bell is head of the forces CID. So what is the situation with gun crime now? So we've certainly seen in the summertime to autumn of last year a spike, specifically around the people who were using guns, but then discharging them as well, which is really concerning. In the six months to January this year, 47 gunshots have been recorded in the West Midlands, compared to 48 in the whole of 2014. And three people have been killed. Kenny is taking me to the scene of one of the recent shootings that happened in January. Just down here, um, Marcia, it was half four in the afternoon. A lad was on a bike, uh, got off his bike, took out the gun he had, fired it four times. Um, it was luck, not judgment, but we weren't dealing with four fatalities there. Wow. Um, ran back to his bike, kept his gun, and is away. So damaging because it seems like a nice, quiet residential area, and yet gun crimes taking place. And concerning for me is, is that was at half four in the afternoon in daylight. That person is still outstanding, and I've not recovered that gun yet. My investigators are out working relentlessly hard to identify it, and the community can absolutely help us. There's, there's some mother, some girlfriend, some father, some brother who knows where that gun is and can help me to take that gun off the street. But why are guns being used more often? I'm meeting Daryl Laycock from Manchester. Gun crime has affected us both. He served 12 years in prison for firearms offences, but says he's turned his life around. Like me, he now works with young people, steering them away from a life of crime. It was widely known that I was pretty heavily involved in violence. So I was shot on three occasions within four years, I seen my mate get killed in front of me. I, I seen it all. Did you, at that point, decide to leave that life? No, if anything. That made me want to stay on the road more. I wanted revenge. OK. What caused someone to shoot you? Um, just retaliation, really, tick for tat, from the very beginning. My daughter, when she was murdered, my response at that point was, I just want justice. And I didn't want justice in the sense to say, well, I'm going to go and retaliate. I'm going to go and 
think, well, someone's killed my child, so you know what, I'm going to go and kill somebody else's child. When I was on the streets, I wanted the justice in the streets, but, yeah, I would put my family through a load of stress, do you know? A bullet went through the window of my mum's house and she was nearly it. That's through my selfish behaviour that people was coming to my house. I've lost over 30 friends and family. It's really hard, but I don't think it's as hard for me as it's you because you give birth to your daughter. Every parent wants for them kids to live, outlive them. The desire to avenge and the tit for tat that Daryl talks about is something I know only too well. My daughter and her friends were caught between two warring gangs. Since her death, police have developed more tools to help them tackle gun crime, including the National Ballistics Intelligence Service, based here in Birmingham. Most of the shooting incidents that we see are actually uh, urban street gangs um, or organised crime groups. Experts here are using cutting-edge forensic technology to gather crucial evidence from the scene of a crime. They are able to identify the type of gun and the ammunition and whether they've been used by criminals before. We see a number of different types of firearms, but predominantly it is handguns. And the most recent trend we've observed is an increase in the use of antique handguns. The position at the moment within the UK is if you don't have a criminal record, anyone can buy a, an antique firearm. This is a Saint-Étienne revolver, 11mm French Ordnance revolver, dates from 1873. Under UK legislation, this is regarded as an antique because the ammunition is, is obsolete. But this is the sort of weapon that we're seeing commonly used uh, in the West Midlands. The criminals make the ammunition to actually fit this weapon. With the work of Nabis, the picture of gun crime is clearer. But does a rise in shootings mean more guns on the streets? We're certainly seeing firearms that are used on the streets now that have never been seen before, and a lot of them are based on this antique firearm. We're seeing some guns that are being used more than once in a crime as well. I think what it shows, though, is that, that there are few firearms available, so people have to use these different methods to try and find guns. So what are the police doing to stop gun crime? In the unfortunate times when a, a shooting does occur, yeah. our investigations are relentless. Scenes of crime, witnesses, house to house, we're doing everything we can to identify and bring to justice those responsible. We're executing warrants, we're doing a firearms operation almost every day in 2016 so far. But we're not just going to arrest our way out of this. It's critical that we ensure that the generation of toddlers now, in 10 or 15 years' time, aren't that generation that are wanting to get involved in gangs, aren't wanting to commit crime or robberies and feel they need to use a gun to do that. Thankfully, the level of gun crime is significantly lower now than when my daughter was killed. And compared to other countries, shootings are relatively rare. But I know one is enough to cause a lifetime of heartache. If you think you can help with the shooting in January, featured in Marcia's report, full details are on the website. You can also find a special interview with the Chief Constable of West Midlands Police, talking about why he wants more armed officers on the